in this book, General Topology, um, Sapinski points our attention to what he calls Frechlet V spaces. And these are really extremely simple objects. And this is why I think that this is a particularly appealing kind of theory, because you can really start to get your head around what's going on at the beginning in a completely geometric um, sort of computational sense, even though the whole theory extends out to the far reaches of all of the things that you can do with general topological theory. Let's say that, so basically all we're saying basically is, is that we have a set K of points and each point is associated with a family of neighborhoods and each of those neighborhoods is a subset of a space. That's all there is to this kind of Frechlet V space concept. Basically, we have a load of points. Those points have neighborhoods, which are like subsets of a space. And it's possible for a point to have multiple neighborhoods. That's pretty much all there is to the definition of these Frechlet spaces. I should emphasize again, uh, Sapinski is calling these things Frechlet spaces. Um, although if you look in the literature, you may find some different terminology being used. Anyway, um, let's just look at a simple example to see how sort of trivial these initial notions are, because it's quite remarkable that we can start off with such a basic way of looking at space and end up with being able to define sort of high grade topological concepts like limit points, open sets, closed sets, and so on by following this theory further. But look, here's an example. We have a set of points. These are basically elements. And then there are some neighborhoods. And you can see I've drawn this sort of something like a Venn diagram showing these four different points. And I've used these sort of loops to represent which neighborhoods these different points are in. And I've written logically on the right hand side, the sort of relationships between these points and the neighborhoods. So I've written like point one is in neighborhood A, point two is in neighborhood B. Okay, so this next slide is the really critical part because what we see here is basically how to connect this fairly basic looking notion of Frechlet spaces to the notions of limit points and then to closed sets and to the rest of topology. So basically what we need to do is to define what a limit point or a limit element, as they sometimes call it, um, is in this kind of Frechlet space setup. And it's actually fairly easy to do. So imagine we have a set K of different elements. Now, if P is an element of K, then P might be a limit point. So when might it be a limit point? Well, if it is a limit point, it'll be a limit point with respect to a particular set. We would say perhaps that P is a limit point of the subset E of our space W. So when, will, when would P be a limit point of this subset E? Well, the condition for that to be true is that every single neighborhood of P should contain a point of E other than P itself. So I've tried to draw this on a diagram. You see in black, I've drawn K. K is the sort of underlying ambient space, if you like. And then we have this subset E of K. And we're interested in whether P is a limit point of that space or not. So how can we check? Well, we can examine the different neighborhoods about P. Now, there might be lots of these. But if each of these neighborhoods has the property that it intersects the set E at a point which is not P, in other words, if each such neighborhood touches E somewhere else other than P, in that case, P is a limit point of this subset E of our space. 
This is the definition of limit points, and we can use these to define closed sets and all sorts of other interesting things. Now, here's the point. Now we've defined limit points, we can define closed sets, and now it's really easy. If we have a subset E of a French set V space W, then we simply say that E is closed if and only if E contains all of its own limit points. Now, this is very important. Uh, because basically the whole idea of topology can be sort of described completely in terms of closed sets. It's more commonly described in terms of open sets, which we shall get to in a moment. But basically, those two are just sort of dualistic ways of understanding the same thing, because the complement of a closed set is an open set. The complement of an open set is a closed set. In other words, if you take some closed set E, then the set of all elements of W other than E will form an open set and vice versa. And so now we can use limit points to understand what closed sets are um, with a little bit of reminders, with a few reminders about notions of topological spaces in general. We can sort of pass that information along to help us understand about the ideas of open sets and closed sets in general topology, purely from thinking, starting from these notions of French letter spaces. Okay, so here's a really nice part of the argument where we really close the loop. We've defined these French letter V spaces, which are fairly general beasts. But now we can see how they correspond to the sort of more traditionally studied topological spaces. So in particular, in these Fretchlet spaces, we have these so-called neighbourhoods of points. Now it turns out that if those neighbourhoods of points satisfy four particular axioms, then those neighbourhoods correspond precisely to open sets of a topology upon the set W. So what are these four conditions that need to be satisfied? Well, the first condition is a bit of a double barrel one. It says that every point X has a neighborhood and the point X is contained within that neighborhood. Also, we require that every point is contained within some neighborhood. So this is a fairly trivial kind of condition to meet. Condition two basically says that given two neighborhoods, that both contain, the both neighborhoods of the point A, then there's going to exist another neighborhood um, here I've called it NA alpha dash dash, which is also a neighborhood of A, and it's contained within the previous two neighborhoods of A. So in other words, what I'm saying is, if NA alpha is a neighborhood of A, and if NA alpha dash is a neighborhood of A, then this kind of family of neighborhoods should have the property that there should exist another neighborhood, uh, which we call NA alpha dash dash, which is also a neighborhood of A. So you can see this illustrated by this sort of Venn diagram here. That if you have a point and it's contained within, it has two different neighborhoods, then there's going to be a third neighborhood contained within the first two. The third condition we need to meet is that it's possible to find a neighborhood that contains one point, but not another. This is a very simple idea. Suppose we have our space K and we have a pair of points A and B, which are different to each other. This is a typo I should have written. A does not equal B. So if we have a couple of points A and B and K, such that A is not equal to B, then it should always be possible to find a neighborhood of 
this point A, which does not contain this point B. So this is some kind of ability to do separation using these sorts of neighborhoods. Now, the fourth condition is that if point A is in one of its neighborhoods, a neighborhood of A, and point B is in a neighborhood of B, then there should exist another neighborhood of B, which is contained within the neighborhood of A. So let's have a look at a diagram of this so we can be a bit more clear. You see here we have a point A and it's contained within a neighborhood NA alpha of A. Now this neighborhood NA alpha of A also contains a point B and what we require as a sort of axiom in this kind of scenario is that there should then exist a neighborhood um, of B, which in this case we've called NB beta, which not only of course contains the point B, but also is contained within the neighborhood um, NA alpha of A. So in other words, if a, if a is in if a has a neighborhood which also contains a point b then b should have a neighborhood which is contained within that first neighborhood of a so these are our four different sorts of axioms and if our collection of neighborhoods satisfy these axioms then we have a topological space uh, induced upon w and these neighborhoods are precisely the open sets and that's wonderful because a closed set is nothing more than a complement of an open set. Therefore, all of this theory matches with the things we were saying about limit points.